All right, I've got a round two video for the Syntec 2000 watt continuous 4000 watt peak inverter from Harbor Freight. And if you watched my first video, I tried to power an RV air conditioner with this inverter connected to the house battery and the starter battery on the RV, and it wouldn't even come close to running it. And since that video, I've learned a lot about uh, how to power inverters, what kind of requirements they need. So I'm here to give this inverter one more shot with my new setup in my new truck camper RV. So I've got it connected directly to this 100 amp hour Battleborn battery via number two gauge cable. And this battery is able to discharge at a 1C rate, which means it can put out 100 amps continuous, which should be more than enough to try to start the air conditioner on this RV. This is going to be a slightly easier test because the AC on this RV is only 9,000 BTUs, but maybe it'll be a little more realistic for this inverter to be able to power. So I've got it connected directly to it. Uh, the battery is fully charged. Look up here. A battery monitor with 100%. We're at 14.6 volts. So all I need to do now is I've got it hooked up. I'll get our uh, power cord plugged in to the shore power line in the RV and we'll give this a shot. All right, we've got the shore power cable plugged in. Go ahead and flip on the power. Alright, so we know it's putting out power. Turn around and see that the microwave's on. And something kind of strange, the GFCI is making a humming noise. So it doesn't like the power that inverter is putting off. But it is just a modified sine wave, so it's pretty understandable. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and try to start the air conditioning on the roof. Turn the thermostat down. Below the set point, and we'll see what happens. Still could not do it. All right, so I'm gonna to try to kind of ramp this on a little bit here. I do have the battery charger turned off. Everything's turned off, but the AC circuit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just turning on the fan, and then we'll try to kick the compressor on. Alright, so we've got our fan on. Now it's just a matter of getting this compressor to start. Alright, while I'm waiting for the compressor to time out, I'm going to try to flip on the electric water heater. See what it does. Alright, so it can handle the electric water heater. So that's good. Almost had it, but it couldn't do it. So I just restarted it again just by flipping the power switch off and back on and it, it did kick the compressor on the AC unit on. It actually started it. It almost tripped out again, but it, it did start it and it is running completely off the inverter right now. You can hear the, uh, it doesn't sound very happy, the compressor, but it is running off of the inverter. So it failed twice, it worked this time, it's iffy. I'm still going to say that the unit doesn't put out anywhere near what they have on the sticker, 2000 watts continuous, 4000 watts peak. Had I installed maybe a second battery, it might help cushion it a little bit. Definitely would work if I put a soft start capacitor in the air conditioner, but it's definitely not advertised. It definitely will not work as advertised. I have a new inverter generator that only puts out 1600 watts continuous and it has absolutely no problem starting this setup. So, just thought I'd do another video, give this thing another shot. It kind of worked. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you next time. Right, one more little test is this 1500 watt heater. 
get it plugged into the inverter. So I'll go ahead and click it on. The heater doesn't like that inverter either, you can hear it. But it did start okay. So when we have a 1500 watt load on, you can see power is all but two bars. And then it just tripped out for some reason. 